North Carolina is a national leader in cleaning up air pollution, and the facts are in. Clean air equals healthier people. Perfect. Clearly, North Carolina has been a leader in environmental uh, legislation, uh, you know, improving the quality of the air. Uh, we were able to show that respiratory deaths were reduced as a consequence of, of that improving air quality. What we also have found is that it looks like the, the rate of death uh, in people over the age of 65 for, from heart attacks and strokes has also been reduced. So we think this is an incredible opportunity to, to really demonstrate the full and complete value of improving our environment uh, and its impact on human health. Dr. H. Kim Lyerly led that study at Duke University, which showed a very clear link between cleaner air and fewer people dying of respiratory diseases. He and other clean air advocates organized this first ever conference called NC Breathe, which included Michelle Bell, a professor of environmental health at Yale University. In a study of 95 urban areas in the U.S., she analyzed residents' short-term exposure to ozone, not the good kind in the atmosphere that protects us from radiation, but the bad kind at ground level, otherwise known as smog. It's caused by such things as power plant emissions and vehicle exhaust. So that's what you're breathing today and over the past few days. And we looked at whether or not that ozone exposure is associated with risk of mortality. And we found, in fact, a strong link showing that ozone levels in the short term, in the, in the recent few days, are associated with risk of premature mortality. It's studies like those that give clean air advocates a powerful bargaining tool in pushing for more environmental protections in the future. But you can't talk about that future without looking at the past, the 2002 Clean Smokestacks Act, which enacted what was then some of the toughest air quality standards in the country. It was um, challenging at the time, but so satisfying now for, for all of us who had some role in it to look back and see that the plan was set and the plan worked and it's translated into those reduced emissions, cleaner air, and as you said, better health. William Ross Jr. was secretary of the Department of the Environment and Natural Resources at the time. Back then, North Carolina's air, especially in the mountains, was deteriorating. High ozone levels were a constant threat, with warnings to not exercise or spend much time outdoors when they got too high. In 1999, North Carolina issued ozone alerts on 111 days. That's practically the entire length of summer. But under the Clean Smokestacks Act, coal plants had to cut way back on the amount of pollution they could emit. And the results were dramatic. By 2012, the number of ozone alerts had plummeted to only 16. So on the whole, um, we're seeing cleaner air. And at the end of the day, we have citizens that are breathing cleaner air. Hey, good way to end. One of the few areas still struggling with ozone is Charlotte. Conference organizer June Blotnick is president of Clean Air Carolina, an advocacy group working to improve air quality. One of their first big targets was school bus emissions. They got two and a half million dollars from the state to put filters on the bus tailpipes. Diesel particulate filters reduce the particle pollution from uh, school buses or transit buses or any kind of off-road equipment they're on by 85 percent. Wow! So uh, it's a big deal and this particular type of technology was only possible when we transitioned to ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel. We've done uh, press conferences using a handkerchief on a tailpipe of a bus and sure enough you can hold up the handkerchief and you see the big black circle on the bus that did not have the filters. Charlotte has also expanded its light rail line and installed more greenways and bikeways. Advocates say cleaning up the air not only keeps us healthier, but it's also good for the economy. I think sometimes there's a myth that good air quality is in direct opposition to economic development. But when we think about the lives that are saved, 
the economic benefit of children not missing school, of workers not missing work, and so on, I think that really that clean air is important for good economic development. And in fact, there was a, a study looking at the costs and benefits of the Clean Air Act showing that the benefits outweigh the cost by about 30 to 1. Cost is a factor because clean air does not come cheap. Cleaning up coal plants and building better ones like this state-of-the-art natural gas plant in Wayne County eventually cost $3.2 billion. But since the act was passed, Duke University's Nicholas Institute for Environmental Policy Solutions studied the economic impact of better health. The grand total of savings? From $6 billion to $16 billion saved. And that doesn't even include benefits from increased tourism or businesses locating to North Carolina. Better yet, the benefits extend across the South because a critical part of the act was getting the Tennessee Valley Authority to clean up its coal plants, which were blowing dirty air into North Carolina. The law required the Attorney General to pursue upwind emissions reductions, and uh, the biggest and most important for North Carolina was TVA. So um, the lawsuit was filed, uh, success at the trial court, reversal at the appeals court, on appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, and uh, before the appeal could be heard, a settlement that uh, accomplished the goals that had been laid out in the law. The irony is, while people in North Carolina were working together to solve the problem, TVA was fighting the cleanup. And yet, TVA ended up spending more than North Carolina, $5 billion in cleanup costs, a $10 million fine, and an untold amount in legal fees. Ultimately, they came around. So what about the future? Well, Bell and other experts say a big concern is fine particulates in the air, including chemicals, metals, and acids. They're so small they can settle into your lungs and aggravate health problems like asthma and can even lead to premature death. In fact, they're so small you can't see them, but they affect everyone who breathes them. Even the richest person and the poorest person in downtown Raleigh are exposed to the same levels of air pollution. So what can we do to minimize our risk? Advocates say the best thing is to speak up to educate yourself about pollution around you and to encourage state officials to continue to lead the way to cleaner air. Well, it's important to speak up about your desire for clean air and uh, uh, to let the leaders know that something needs to be done if there's a problem.